Today's video is brought to you by Motion VFX. You know, with all of this cold weather, I can't help but think of temperature. And with temperature comes color temperature because I like lights. And that's what we're talking about today. So my name is Brady. If you have been here before, well, you know the drill. And if you don't know the drill, let's learn the drill. I guess hit the like button and the share button, the subscribe button, whatever it takes for you sitting there to tell me sitting here that you like this video. And if you don't like this video, don't tell me. I don't need that negativity in my life. And if you have not been here before, hang your coat up, stay a while, or keep your coat on, it's cold, unless we warm it up with some color temperature. Bad joke. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. We're talking about color temperature, lighting, and really understanding the differences in Kelvin color temperature and how it can affect your image for better or for worse, or just for neutral control. So if you're not familiar with Kelvin units, Kelvin units is a system put in place to measure either the warmth or the coolness of a light source. So we've got anywhere from really naturally 2000 Kelvin all the way up to like 12,000 Kelvin, which is very cool on the 12,000 side and very warm on the 2000 side. And it's very important to understand the different color temperatures and also the different color temperatures in collaboration with your camera's white balance because that will also make a huge difference and we're gonna get into that a little bit later in this video. So let's just talk about the Kelvin temperature scale and work our way up to see what the different uh, number units really do in terms of a light color temperature. So just for reference, my camera's white balance is set to 5600 Kelvin, which is daylight. And we're gonna get to that in a little bit as well. But we are now looking at a light that is set to 2700 Kelvin. And 2700 Kelvin is also known as tungsten. It's a very warm orange light. We are very familiar with it, with being from incandescent bulbs, halogens, household lights will oftentimes have these warm 2700 Kelvin, soft warm lights. So when we're looking at this light at 2700 Kelvin, you see that it's very warm. But now we adjust it up to say 4000, let's make it our next stop. And you can see that it cools down. It's still got some of the warm characteristics, but it's definitely a lot cooler as it is compared to that 2700 Kelvin. So now, working our way up a little bit more. Now we've got 5600 Kelvin, which you might recognize that number, as I had said before, daylight color temperature. Now, since the camera's white balance in this light are at the same exact Kelvin unit, they are equaling out. It's pure white at this point. So now anything above this, when your light is set to, it's gonna be a cooler looking light source. So as we work our way up to now 6500 Kelvin, you can see that the light is now getting these cool characteristics. So just experimenting with lights and understanding the difference that these Kelvin units make is a very important tool to know just in the back of your head when you're out shooting on location or working with existing location lighting. So to clear things up about what I mentioned a minute ago about the camera's white balance being the same number as a light, that may come off confusing because for the longest time, white balance and color temperature confused me because it felt that the numbers were going backwards and I boost one up and then the light's warmer and why is my camera 7,000 and warm and why is this 2,000 and warm? It didn't make any sense to me. So let's give an example real quick. I've got a handful of light sources here. I've got an Aperture B7C bulb. I've got an Aperture Nova here. What is lighting me is an Aperture 300X, which is a bicolor light. We'll get to that in a little bit as well. But what I'm getting at is I've got a handful of different light sources here and we can see that the impact the camera's white balance will have when we adjust all of the settings accordingly. So what I'm gonna do is, for simplicity, set everything to the same color temperature. And I'm doing that using Citus Link, which makes it very easy. So now we've got all of the lights in the scene set to 5600 Kelvin. And now my camera is set to 5600 Kelvin as well. So like I said before, they're gonna balance out. And you've got a pure white light at daylight, a pure white light, pure white all the way around. And now my camera is set to pure white as well. So whenever that white balance on your camera matches up with the light's color temperature, it's gonna be pure white. And just to clear that up a little bit more, now I'm gonna set all of these to 2700 Kelvin. So now all of these fixtures are set to 2700 Kelvin. They're very warm right now. It's like those very incandescent soft bulbs. But looking at the monitor with my camera set to 2700 Kelvin as well, I am pure white. So now all of our lights are set back to daylight, the camera's set back to daylight, everything is pure white. But say all the lights that you have are just daylight sources, because it's very common for you to just have a static like 5600 Kelvin daylight source. But say you wanna get something like a sunset look. Well, sunset, we imagine a little bit warmer of a quality of light. 
So how do we get that warmer look? And you can cheat that a little bit with your camera's white balance as well. So if I were to boost up my camera's white balance to say 7,500, you start to see that now with the camera's white balance warmer and set to a higher number, everything starts to look a little bit warmer. But there's also a catch to it. You kind of have to have control of all of your lights in the entire scene. So say this B7C bulb for a minute is not daylight, say it's a warmer color temperature. That's where you start to see some flaws. So with it now at 2700 Kelvin, this is very warm because our white balance is set to very cool light making that warm. So now you start to lose that authenticity of this light being just naturally warm when you have other sources in the frame. So it gets difficult, say you've got a natural computer light or um, headlights, just anything that it, you can't adjust really that's when you're gonna to start to see some issues. Now, we're starting to get our heads wrapped around the concept of the communication between your camera's white balance and your light's Kelvin color temperature. But now that raises the question, how do we even get there? How do we achieve this adjustment of the color temperature of the light? And there's a few different options. Uh, there's bicolor lights, which are becoming very, very popular in the LED industry, and bicolor meaning two color, meaning there's warm all the way up to cool adjustability. Or you've got just a daylight light source and you can put a gel in front of it and some other lights will be RGB, meaning a whole array of colors. So now what we're gonna talk about first is actually the key light that I've got lighting my face here and that's an Aperture 300X. And this is their bi-color fixture. So looking at the light, you can see that the chip will adjust the color temperature as you go. So you've got the chip at 2700 Kelvin right here. And then as I bring up the color temperature up to 6500 Kelvin, you can see that there's this change in color temperature. So we're starting very warm and then working our way into the cool spectrum of this warm or of this white lighting. Now, say this light, we're gonna put it to 5600 Kelvin, just pure white. Say we wanna warm it up now. Well, you can do so with something called a gel and there's CTO and CTB gels in different strengths of which, and CTO meaning color temperature orange, CTB meaning color temperature blue. And you can put different strengths of these gels in front of your daylight fixture to either warm it up or cool it down a little bit. And now that way you don't need to rely on your camera's white balance to cool this uh, light up or warm it down. You can use gels and actually adjust the, the light itself, the physical light. So that's another option of achieving this. And of course you've got uh, these RGB lights, which you can really do it like an orange to blue range. Um, but RGB I've found is just not as color accurate on skin tones, which is very important. When you've got CCT lights, which are that white Kelvin color temperature adjustability, that's when they're gonna be a little bit more accurate or a lot more accurate with the skin tones making things look real the, as far as the color rendition goes. And again, I'm not the tech side of things. I don't know the color science and the color rendition and the testing and all of those numbers, but I do know that the quality is gonna be a lot better. But let's talk about today's sponsor. There's times when I'm definitely not drinking beer and playing guitar and out of nowhere, my screen brightens up like crazy and I can't help but to get sucked into all of the insane options for elements that Motion VFX has to offer whether it's creative LUTs, film emulation, even the YouTuber elements that you see in all of my videos, they make it so easy for you to customize each and every YouTube element for really all of your social media needs, or even stock footage and stock overlays like smoke, or you've got light leaks and light hits and so many creative options. Sometimes I just go through and look at what there is on their site to just give myself creative inspiration. I mean, they really have everything on there. Creative LUTs, film emulation and more. So I'm gonna leave a link down below for you guys to check them out yourself and let's get back to the video. So the last question could end up being, what is the motivation for each of these lights? And when do you want a warm light? When do you want a cool light? How do you know? Well, in more simple terms, I mean, we think about it, if we want a warm sunset, we're probably gonna have a warm hard light coming through somewhere. Or if we want this cool moonlight, we're gonna have a cool moonlight. But there's a lot of other sources that can really be a cause for motivation, like uh, household lamps, similar to this, how you see all those incandescent bulbs are very warm. So it could make sense to, you know, have an in-frame practical like this and wanting to adjust my key light on myself to match up for this when we get into motivated lighting. So I would go into the Sidus link. And now that I'm in the Sidus link, if I'm motivating my face light based off of this bulb here, I'm gonna bring that down to 2700 Kelvin being a bicolor light. So now these are gonna match up and it could look like this light right here is coming from 
the light bulb. So there's a lot of numbers going on here and I'm not a numbers person at all. I'm very visual, I'm more creative and numbers just confuse me. That's why for literally like the first four or five years of me having a camera, I can never understand why when my camera's white balance number goes up to like 7,000, everything turns warm. But how come when I bring these lights to 7,000, they turn cool? And what it is, is telling your camera what you want to be true white. So this 2700 Kelvin light, that's warm. Like in real life, that's very warm. So in order to make this white, you wanna tell your camera what that white balance is. So 2700 Kelvin is what you set it to. So it cools everything down because it's cooling down this light to turn it into a pure white. But understanding the Kelvin color scale is a necessity when it comes to anything lighting, even natural light. It's just helpful to understand what environment you're working with because some environments will have this 2700 Kelvin. A lot of the times you were working with like fluorescent lights, which are around 4,000 in that range or daylight, natural daylight is gonna be 5,600 Kelvin. There's a wide diversity of all of these color temperatures just in natural life, even if we're shooting with natural light, that it's really helpful to understand the difference between warm and cool and how to achieve that and how to modify it accordingly. So I hope this video was very helpful for you guys. If so, please hit that like button, share button, subscribe button, whatever it is, as we always do. And until next time, that completes this video. Anyway, adios. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.